Amen, amen. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. Today is Resurrection Sunday, and somebody ought to give God praise on this morning, because today is the day that we celebrate our risen Savior for all that God has done. We thank and praise God for what God is going to do on this morning. Look, Emmanuel Church family, we have a special guest in the house this morning, all the way from Brooklyn, New York, uh, and I will introduce her a little bit later, but you all know that there's another special guest that this morning when they rolled back the stone and they, when they looked to look, that the body that was placed there on Friday night was not there this morning, which means that Jesus got up and Jesus got up for you. Whatever you're going through this morning, I want you to know that you have the power to get up. Give God a hand clap of praise as our praise team comes to lead us in praise and worship.
through your Jesus. Come on, how many of you know that the blood still works? The blood still works. The blood still works. That God will never lose it. The blood still works over your situation. The blood still works in your situation and circumstance. We praise God this morning that the blood still works. And if that's good news, do me a favor this morning. Just go ahead, text, go ahead, type in the chat, and let us know where are you worshiping from on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We know that the blood, it still works. The blood yeah, yeah, that flows yeah. from the highest mountain down to the lowest valley, that it reaches, that it can touch your situation in your bedroom while you're driving down the street. You can be in a hospital or even laying in a dormitory bed locked up behind bars, but the blood still works on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And we thank God for the blood on this morning. Let us go to God in a word of prayer. Oh, we eternal, wise, and grateful God, we thank you this morning for the blood. Father, we thank you because the blood that saturates us and keeps us, and it's the blood that's filled from the veins of Emmanuel where the well can go and plunders can den deep down and be filled with your power and covered. God, we thank you on this Resurrection Sunday that, God, you shed your blood for each and every one of us. That, God, because of your blood, that it keeps us, it protects us, it covers us, it leads us, it guides us. Your blood still has power. God, thank God for the blood on this morning. Now, God, on this Resurrection Sunday morning, somebody needs to feel your power. Somebody needs to feel your strength. Somebody needs to feel your might. Somebody needs to feel your glory. Somebody needs to know that you still sit high and look low. Now, God, allow your Holy Ghost power to take place and rule and to reign on this morning. God, do whatever you need to do in this worship experience. God, we submit and surrender our will over to you, and we say yes, God. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. God, we trust and obey. Whatever you call us to do, we'll say yes, God. Now do it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, I am exceedingly overwhelmed with joy on this Resurrection Sunday morning. We thank God. Amen. Today is like the Super Bowl for the church, for the Christian faith. Amen. And it doesn't matter where you are. Amen. We thank and praise God that all over this nation that people are rejoicing and celebrating because this is the day that Jesus got up with all power. Amen. And because Jesus got up, you too can get up. My beloved brothers and sisters, we had to change worship this morning because normally we would be here uh, in 45 minutes, but now because we're here this morning, you know we moved the service to 9 a.m. We want to thank God for each and every one of you for the outpouring of love and support for our resurrection community outreach. This morning, amen, in just a little over an hour, we will be blessing over 200 homeless brothers and sisters here in the dorm area. We thank God every individual we come into contact with this morning, they will receive some socks. Why some socks, Pastor? As I shared with you a little over a month ago, I, I had a conversation with a homeless gentleman here in Durham, and he a I asked the question, what is it that homeless brothers and sisters need? An outsider shelter. He said, Pastor, the thing that homeless people get excited about is to be able to put on a fresh pair of socks. And God convicted me and said, you know what? That on Resurrection Sunday that we're going to give away over 200 packs of socks to homeless brothers and sisters. The second thing that God laid on my heart uh, was that everybody uh, who wants to get a haircut, wants to get their hair done, uh, that we've connected with barbers and beauticians here in Durham that will be cutting hair and doing hair for absolutely free, F-R-E-E, for our homeless brothers and sisters. And then we partner with Central Union Mission where we're able to feed over 200 homeless brothers and sisters. And because of your donations and love and support, everyone that we come into contact with will receive what we like to call a, a goodie bag. You know how when you go to somebody's house and you go to a party, they give you that goodie bag. The goodie bag is filled with all types of snacks, all types of gifts, uh, all types of low sanitation, hand wash stuff. And so we just praise God for you, the faithful and dedicated members of Emmanuel Amy Church, and our virtual members for your outpouring of love to be able to make today's community outreach all that God has called it to be. So we thank you in advance. Amen.
amen, amen, and amen. Today, it is the first Sunday of April, which means it's Communion Sunday. Wherever you are, do me a favor. Go to your kitchen. Get you a piece of chip. Get a potato chip. Get a cookie. Get a cracker. Get a piece of bread. Amen. Get you some orange juice, pineapple juice, grape juice, apple juice. Uh, listen, it's Resurrection Sunday. Leave that Manny Chevis alone. Amen. Leave the mimosas. Leave that. Yeah, y'all know we down here in North Carolina. I'm from D.C., uh, so I heard y'all got a little bit of something. Y'all making them back rolls. Or no. That's not what we want you to consume on communion. Amen. Amen. And so get something that represents the blood of Jesus. Amen. On this morning. And so we thank and praise God. Amen. And amen. Normally we would shout out all of our birthday uh, folks for the month, uh, but we'll catch you next Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. And so we're excited about what Jesus, Jesus got up this morning for you and for me. Amen. And so we're going to jump straight into it. If this is your first time worshiping with us virtually, go ahead, type that into the chat. Let us know where are you worshiping from this morning. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, I told you all we had a special guest this morning. I am so excited uh, that this sister came all the way from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, you have seen her uh, on Sunday's BET Best, Sunday's Best, God excuse me, on God. BET, uh, and God had blessed her in a phenomenal way uh, that she was one of the finalists. Her and another sister, they had the same name, uh, but check this out. If you ever saw her, uh, what they considered, uh, it was not the interview, uh, but it was the um, the, oh, the tryout joint. You know what I'm trying to say, yeah. Uh, and so she had to come on stage, and she was singing uh, before Kelly Price, and she was singing before Jonathan McReynolds, and she was singing uh, before, I don't even know if it was Tina or Erica Campbell from Murray Murray, it was one of them. Uh, and as soon as God had her open up her voice, even Kelly Price, somebody who I know per looked like, oh my goodness, what in the world do we have here? Jonathan McReynolds got excited and started rocking, amen. And one of the sisters from Murray Murray just lifted up their hand and said, that's a bad mama jamma. And we thank and praise God, amen. Our special guest this morning is Sister Tiffany Andrews. Sister Tiffany Andrews is a powerful and dynamic ministry gift to the body of Christ from Newark, New Jersey, and became, uh, Sunday, it was season nine of Sunday's Best, amen. She is not just a phenomenal singer and a psalmist, but she is an evangelist, a preacher of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. And so we thank and praise God, had the opportunity to sit in the back and talk with her. I'm talking about a kind, caring sister who is just so humble and just down to earth. Um, there are some folks, uh, you know, uh, 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 that can get a little, uh, you don't even want to really yeah. deal with them. I know it's Resurrection Sunday, but we just going to keep it 100. Uh, there's some artists, uh, y'all know my brother, and, and I've been able to, to rub elbows with some some big, and there's some folks that I tell them I ain't even really trying to go into the dressing room, just get me a plate. And they, they act a real bougie, uh, but she is one who just uh, walks with kings and queens, but keeps the common touch. Uh, and so we thank and praise God this morning for the ministry of Sister yeah. Tiffany Andrews. So do me a favor, just go ahead, type in the text, go ahead, type in the chat, and just say, Sing Tiffany, amen. As the next voice you come here, she bought. Listen, this is how I, how much you know she loves Jesus. We asked her to come. She came from New York, uh, and when we got here, she had singers and musicians with her. We had no clue uh, that she brought her own folks, amen. But that lets you know the heart that she has for being able to minister the word of God on this morning. And so we thank God. Ain't even no need to belabor it. After the next voice of Minister Tiffany Andrews, uh, then we'll be able to hear what God has to say. Uh, but we just want the Holy Ghost to have his way. Amen. Even in the comments, go ahead, put the, uh, the clap of hand emojis, amen, and give God a hand clap of praise as evangelist Tiffany Andrews comes to lift up song of praise, thanksgiving, and celebration. Tragedies are commonplace, all kinds of diseases, people are slipping away, economies down, people don't get enough pay, but as for me.
for your power. Thank you for protection. moment to worship you and to honor you. We want to give ourselves to you. Uh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me Can wait. Hallelujah. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Oh Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. I think I'll say it again. Can wait. Oh, oh my, give me you. 
his testimony. Lord, give me you. Lord, Lord, give me you. Can you help me see, Lord? Give me you. Everything else can wait. Everything else can wait. You're so important to me, God. Give me you. I hope I'm not. I hope I'm not too late. Oh, Lord. Lord, give me you. Yeah, Lord. Lord, give me you. Lord, I'm giving all of me to you, Lord. Lord. Give me you. Yeah, Lord. Lord, give me you. One more time, say give me you. Everything can wait. I desire only you, Lord. I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not too late. Hey, give me you. Give me you. I want you. part of the song. It's me, your love. I'm on my knees crying now to you. It's me
my mother would say, I need the oh, I need the. Can we just worship just for a moment? I feel like God wants to do something right here. And you never know who came in here with something every hour. but I don't want to cut up too bad. I don't want to cut up. They said when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Woo! Maybe he ain't done nothing for you lately, but the fact that you woke up with your right mind. March 20th was declared a full year of the pandemic. The fact that you are alive is a reason to give God glory. So many lost. I said so many lost their lives. But the fact that you're still here
coming up from the grave. They don't get excited about that no more, but he got up from the grave. because I didn't lose my mind so I got a reason to praise him. So many people are the walking dead. They are alive but they, haven't, they don't even exist. The fact that I didn't lose my mind is a reason to slip my hands up. Oh God, thank you. The Lord has been so amazing. He's been so wonderful, F Sharp. He's been so good. This is the song that uh, I was really nervous about, Pastor, when I went on the show because what most people don't know is I was rejected three times. And when I went, and the times that I was rejected, I said, eh, I'm not even going to do this again. But it's something about when it's your time and your season. Yeah. That's God will strategically set things up. He will. I told God, I said, Lord, I just, I don't even want to be in a competition. Most people said, for you it really wasn't, it didn't seem like it was a competition because it wasn't. I was there because God wanted me to tell my story. So some people, they have an opinion, and it's okay, because I didn't want the contract. That's just the truth of the matter. I said, God, when well, my assignment is up, send me home. In the interim of going to this competition, they said, what song are you going to sing for the audition? I said, I'm going to do this one. I said, because that's the song that ministers to me. Most people don't know. The doctors told my mother because I had one polyp on my vocal cord, they said she will never sing again. She can forget about preaching because they say the African-American preacher, all they do is scream. And the doctor said, particularly where the polyp was, was very crucial because my vocal cord could have been paralyzed. Subsequently, I would have had to talk with a trachea. But my mother, as apostolic as she is, she's my short stack of pancakes. And uh, she's five foot one. She walked in there with her pleated skirt, her coffee stockings, and a dolly on her head. She told the doctor, she said, before any of y'all touch my baby, I need to pray for you. She made them take off their stuff, anoint them with oil, and then told them to go prepare for surgery. And so, she prayed for six weeks, I couldn't talk, but this was the first song I heard when I came out of the recovery room on the way home from the hospital. Uh-huh. So many doors you've opened, so many ways you made, so many times you healed me. testimony. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can praise you enough. I owe you my life. I can praise you enough. Even in the trials, you've been so good to me. Oh 
Has he been good to anybody this morning? Has he been good to anybody this morning? Has he been good to anybody this morning? Hallelujah. Has he been good to anybody this morning? On this resurrection Sunday morning, has God been good to anybody this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. If God has been so good to you, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. If God has been so good to you, you ought to praise and magnify the Lord. If God has been so good to you, you ought to praise and magnify the one who brought you free and give you honor, praise, and glory for everything God has done this morning. We thank and praise God on this Resurrection Sunday morning. Amen for Evangelist Tiffany Andrews. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for Evangelist Tiffany Andrews. Amen. Come on, even in the chat, go ahead, put your hands together. Come on, comment. Come on, send up some hearts. Send up some lights. Amen. We thank and praise God for what God is doing in her life, what God has done in her and through her. Amen. Amen. It's preaching time. There's no need to belabor the hour. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 2. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 2. Here now in the reading of God's word. When they found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. Amen. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. My beloved brothers and sisters, I want to preach a little while this morning from the sermon topic. Found guilty but innocent found guilty but innocent God have your way in Jesus name amen my beloved brothers and sisters the presumption of innocence is a legal principle that everyone accused of any crime is considered innocent until proven guilty under the presumptions of innocence the legal burden of proof is on the prosecution, which they must then present a compelling argument to a judge or a jury of their peers. And if the prosecution does not prove that the charges against an individual are validated, then that person is acquitted of the charges he or she is charged of. It's interesting to note that we find in the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, a real familiar passage of scripture that when they came to where the body was laid, the stone was rolled away. But before we can get to the stone being rolled away, we must then rhetorically retaliate and ask the question, why was someone placed inside of the stone? The stone, in fact, represented what we consider to be the dungeon, what we consider to be the cave. And it's interesting to know that in these ununited states of America, many of us know what it means to be found guilty, but yet be innocent. And if you'd allow me this Resurrection Sunday morning in the words of Missy Elliott to back it up, flip it, and reverse it, and take you to the preceding chapter to give you some historical content before we fast forward to where we find our text this morning, we would understand, my beloved brothers and sisters, that uh, in this world that many of us know what it means to be found guilty, but yet be innocent that so many of us can roll the names of those who have been found guilty, but yet have been innocent. Uh, my beloved brothers and sisters, that to be found guilty means that you are found uh, liable and held accountable of the charges that you have been charged against. To be found guilty of something means the burden of proof has been proven that in fact you had committed a crime and or a violation. And the truth be told, everyone in here this morning, including myself, uh, truth be told, we have been found guilty of something in life. Uh, now, I don't know what your personal history is. I don't know what you have to go through in life. Uh, but the truth be told, we've all have gone through something and have been found guilty. Uh, it doesn't matter if you cheated on a test in grade school that when you were caught, you were found guilty, even though the presumptions of innocence is born in the proof on the teacher to prove that you did what they claim you did. They had to, in fact, 
prove what you did. Many brothers know what it means to be found guilty, yet you're innocent because you hold on to your innocence until you see the burden of proof. Uh, if this was in the streets and we was on the south side, uh, that some of us would just carry like, you got to show me the evidence because I'm not copping to nothing. The truth be told uh, that many of us in our urban communities all the way from Compton to Capitol Hill, that if we keep it 100, that many of us don't like to cop to nothing because you got to prove that we did what it is you claim that we did. Uh, and so much so that in many of our urban communities, my beloved brothers and sisters, uh, that many of us have been found guilty, but yet we understand that we have been innocent. Uh, I grew up in a household, and my brother uh, is here, but my little sister uh, was one who would always end up doing something, but because I was supposed to be watching her, that I was found guilty even though I was innocent. And she would sit there and laugh at me when I had to take the burden of the pain, and I had to take the burden of the punishment, because the punishment, uh, I know this doesn't occur to today's young folks, uh, but it came in the form of a belt coming out of the closet that, yeah, I was found guilty even though I was innocent. And some of us know what it means, uh, Brother Joy and Brother Grayson, to say, you got to take one for the team. You see, in the text this morning, we find a gentleman who was found guilty even though he was innocent. The Bible lets us know in the preceding chapter that he was one who had to take one for the team and refused to admit or even acknowledge the trumped up charges that were charged against him. Uh, we find in the text this morning a bad man who comes from Galilee in the town of Nazareth. His name was Jesus the Christ. And the Bible lets us know that he was charged on some trumped up charges. And when he was charged on some trumped up charges uh, that there was Pontius Pilate who said let's send him to the ruler called King Herod. And King Herod who was the ruler over the Galilean area said if you are really the Messiah and you're really who you claim to be. Uh, let me see you do some tricks. Let me see you perform a miracle. Let me see you prophesy to somebody. Let me help you out on this Resurrection Sunday. Uh, that when you are guilty but yet you have been innocent, you understand people will want to prove that you're innocent, but you understand it ain't about me proving who I am, but it's about God proving what he has done through me. Don't you get sick and tired of people coming up on your job, people coming to your school, people coming on your social media page and they want you to prove who you are and what you are and how you got to do what you got to do and how you are where you are based off of what they think you are but sometimes you got to sit back in the words of Jesus looking at King Herod and don't say nothing. I came and let somebody know that in this next season of life you ain't going to have to prove who you are to nobody. Uh, I don't want no people around me that want me to prove who I am and want me to validate what I can do do because you got to understand my character is not based off of your validation but my character is based off of what God is doing in me and through me and can't you see Jesus looking at King Herod and when Herod said if you're really the Messiah let me see you prophesy let me see you perform a trick and Jesus sat there with his arms folded and probably had his hands crossed like Negro you crazy slim uh, in the worlds of the street we're saying like this you got me messed up uh, you all know what I'm really trying to say and Jesus is looking at Herod and say you really have no clue who you are. All I want you to know Emmanuel AME Church is that the people that roll up on you in this next season they don't even know who you are. They don't even know what you possess. They don't even know the strength and the validation that's been placed upon you and sometimes you just got to sit there and look at them and don't say a word. Uh, just go ahead and type that in chat and say stop talking all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because you understand any time you are in a court of law uh, you have what is called either a public defender or you have an, an attorney and your attorney is one that will speak on your behalf and Minister Ellis they will tell you listen if I don't advise you to speak don't say nothing uh, and that's what Jesus understood that I got an attorney on my side uh, and the attorney is my father the Lord God Almighty and sometimes when you understand who is your attorney because you know God almighty is on your side then you understand I ain't got to prove to you who I am I ain't got to validate what you said and when people roll up on you and say how did you get to where you are how 
why you're doing X, Y, and Z. Sometimes you just got to look at them and don't say a mumbling word. But the problem with many of us is that when people roll up on us, we feel the need to validate their assumption. That, that's, a, that's a sad thing that when somebody scrolls on your timeline and posts on your wall, you feel like you got to rhetorically retaliate and let them know who you are. Sometimes you just got to let them say what they got to say and don't even mind them no business. That's what Jesus did. Uh, he's looking at King Herod and saying, Slim, you got me all messed up. You don't even know who I am. And so King Herod jumps up and says, man, this man ain't done nothing. I find no fault. Send him back to Pilate. And so now they send him to Pontius Pilate, and he goes from the Sanhedrin court. And then when Pontius Pilate sees him, he looks at him and he says, uh, there's something different about this man. I want you to know he's been found guilty, but yet he was innocent. They didn't have any evidence that he committed a crime, so much so that Pontius Pilate asked the question, what do you want me to do? Do we uh, lock Jesus up, or do we set him free? And the crowd respond, free Barabbas, but crucify Jesus. Jesus. Isn't it a sad thing when somebody who has the power and is in charge can make an executive decision and an order but they don't say a mumbling word? Has that happened to anybody in here this morning that you've had people in your life that could have exonerated you, that could have spoke up on your behalf, but they refuse to say anything about your character? Uh, it's a sad, sad thing that when you are found guilty but yet you know that you're innocent and the person who's in charge of your execution won't even stand up even though he knows ain't nothing really going on with you. Uh, it reminds me of a time uh, I used to stay in trouble with Sister Divine when I was in high school. I was in high school and as I'm in high school I, I, I did something uh, that I was accused of but I really didn't do it. I want you to understand uh, somebody else did what they did. Uh, I let them use my car in high school and they left campus to go get something to eat. Now I told them to bring me some food Food back, but I never left the campus, but the security saw my car leaving campus, so they came and pulled me out of class, and because I had the McDonald's bag, it was all the evidence that they needed, and so they pulled me back, but the interesting thing is that the vice principal knew that it was not me driving my car, because she saw who was driving the car, and in fact, she got some food from that other student who was my man, but because she refused, she refused food, she ain't speak up on my my behalf. So when security came and hooked me up with some trumped up charges and tried to suspend me, I held to the street code. Because I ain't going to snitch on my man, Minister Ellis. We don't go like that. But I was found guilty even though I was innocent. And I got suspended for three days for a trumped up charge for something I ain't never even done. And I felt betrayed by my administrator. Uh, anybody here, you've been feeling betrayed by somebody who knew your innocence, but they refused to speak up and say anything about you. It could have been on your job that somebody tried to say, you're always tardy, you're always late, and you sitting there like, Negro, you know I ain't late, but you ain't going to speak up and say nothing, and you got to understand every now and again in this journey called life, when Jesus was sitting there looking at Pilate, like, are you kidding me? Are you serious? You're going to find me guilty when you know that I'm innocent, then oh wretched man of me. I want you to understand, look what Jesus says. This is the part that messes us up. Uh, the, the famous word from the seven last words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's a problem for me, Emmanuel Amy Church. I'm going to keep it 100. This is Resurrection Sunday. I cannot lie. Uh, I, I struggle with that That. You mean to forgive somebody who just did me dirty? That, that, that's a hard thing. Uh, and I was convicted some years ago. i never forget uh, one of my stories. Uh, thank you, Pastor Lamar. Uh, he came and preached back in February for our men's day, and he shared his story. Uh, now, I always said I never share my personal business, but I was convicted uh, by Pastor Lamar on men's day, uh, and my, my family don't even know this. And so, of uh, multi meter, we may need to edit this part out, but I, I never forget when I was a police officer, uh, I was driving my motorcycle with some friends friends, and when I was driving my motorcycle with some friends, we went into an area
area where we were not supposed to go to because the road said do not disturb. We was in southeast D.C. It was down Good Hope Road. I'll never forget down Unifest. And as we went past the barriers that said do not, uh, uh, do not enter, we parked our bikes. Now what I want you to know is the police rolled up on us and everybody took off, Sister Scott. Everybody took off. Now I'm the police. I got my badge. I got my gun. I ain't going nowhere. I'm legit. Now they going to leave. Let them leave. But I ain't running from the police. So I'm sitting there chilling and the officer jumps out the car, uh, uh, Brother Joy, and he comes and snatches me off the bike and slams me on the ground. I, I, I never forget it. Now, uh, I was speaking in tongues, Emmanuel, but I wasn't speaking in them type tongues. And he, he jammed me up and now when he saw my gun, you automatically know he drew his weapon. He was extremely excited. Uh, I don't know. And I was praying, God, please don't let it go out like that. Uh, he called his boys. They locked me up. Uh, now, when somebody saw my badge, because my badge was in the motorcycle underneath of the seat, and they said, oh, hold on, hold on, he the police. Uh, and, and so he said, well, who was them other dudes that you was riding with? I remember Jesus talking to King Herod. I ain't say nothing. I don't know. And, and, and so he said some words to me that I ain't really appreciate. In fact, he said, well, if you don't tell me who they were, I'm still going to arrest you. Arrest me for what? Now, you have to understand, I had a learner's permit for my motorcycle. And because I had a learner's permit, I'm technically supposed to be riding with other people who have license. Now, I want you to know, I was riding it with about 10 other bikes, but you saw everybody else ran. I was the only one that stayed. So what exactly are you trying to charge me with? Uh, to make a long story short, he literally puts me in handcuffs, arrests me, and takes me down uh, to the U.S. Park Police headquarters, and he takes me through live scan and process me, Brother Joy. Now, you know, uh, I'm in this joint. I'm furious. I'm upset. And because I was a police officer, he knew I was a police officer. They didn't put me in what was called general population. Uh, he put me in a private holding cell. And so as I'm there for about four hours, they, then they finally come and release me, ROR, release you on your own recognizance. And so I had to go to court. I had to go to court. And when I went to court, I never forget, I go to court. The judge uh, looks at the police report, looks at me, looks at the police report, looks at the officer, and says, something don't make sense. He, he, he read the police report, and this is what the police report said. Uh, now, you all have common sense. The police report said that I heard the subject one, that's me, S1. I, I heard him tell everybody else to leave as I exited my vehicle to conduct a stop. Now, the judge said, I ride motorcycles. Uh, what's his motorcycle on? He said, yeah. He said, were the other motorcycles on? He said, yeah. He said, did he have on a helmet? He said, yeah. He said, did the other bikers have on a helmet? He said, yeah. He said, were you in your patrol car with your license sirens going. He said, yeah. And he said, were they on your side or the passenger side? He said, they were on the passenger side. And the judge said, how did you hear him say anything when all of this was going on? I looked at the judge. I said, you a bad man. Go ahead, talk, because I ain't saying nothing. And he said, I'm going to no pro quill this case. In other mere words, I'm dropping this case and I'm removing it from your record as if it never existed. And all I'm really trying to say this morning is when you are found guilty but you know that you're innocent sometimes you ain't even got to say a mumbling word but you can let God fight your battles and when you learn to let God fight your battles then you'll understand that ain't no devil in hell that can stop me but what God has for me it is for me and so they then take my Jesus they nailed him to the cross and when they nailed him to the cross they made a pivotal mistake because they should have left Jesus' body on the ground. But when they lifted him up, I want you to understand if the Bible says if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me. And when they lifted Jesus' hands up, one hand went to Alpha, the other hand went to Omega. And I'm trying to figure out what was Jesus guilty of. All he did was heal the blind. All he did was was raised the dead. All he did was heal the sick. All he did was touch the lame. All he did was preach the gospel. All he did was perform miracles. But the Bible says they put a stake in his hand. They put a nine inch stake through his wrist. Why would it go through his wrist? Because I want you to understand. He said, because of the holes in my hand, that means I'm touch your situation because the holes in 
my hands. I mean, I'm going to touch your body. I'm going to touch your job. I'm going to touch your marriage. I'm going to touch your children. I'm going to touch your education. I'm going to touch your church. But that's not how the story ends. They put a 12 in spike through his ankles. Why would they touch his ankles? Because the pain that shut up through his ankles understands that he was bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement of his peace is upon him. Talk to me, prophet Isaiah. Over 700 years ago, he prophesied that there will be one that will go through hurt. There will be one that will go through pain so that you can make it. And so when Jesus had the strips through his ankles, it was so that you can walk. It was so that you can move. It was so that you can execute. Then they put spears in his side. Droplets of blood came seeming down. Why would they pierce him in the side? Because I believe that the side represents your lungs, your kidneys, your organs. Because I've been pierced in my side. And the chastisement is upon me by my stripes. I can heal every organ in your body by my stripes. I can touch every system in your body. Then they put a crown of thorns on his head. Why would they put thorns on his head? And I believe Jesus said because let this mind that's in you be in Christ Jesus so that anytime you got migraines, anytime you confuse, anytime you can't figure it out, the Lord had to go through the thorns of his head. But hold up, stop. Wait a minute. Let me put some praising in it. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that they mocked him and put king of Jews over his head. And so because Jesus was mocked, I want you to know you can make it when they mock you on your job. You can make it when they mock you in school. You can make it when they mock you in the community. You can make it when they mock you on social media. You can make it. Don't matter what you're going through. But Jesus already bared it for you. And because Jesus bared the hurt, bared the grunt, bared the pain, you got the power, even though you're found guilty, to tell somebody, I'm innocent. I'm innocent and that's not how the story ends because three days later Jesus got up with all power in his hands wait a minute that's this morning Jesus got up Jesus got up and because Jesus got up you can get up they rolled back the stone the body was gone and Jesus made it up 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 and because Jesus went up you can get up we can get up Emmanuel and me church we're headed up up the highway up to the God little high sub gaining each and every day is there anybody here you're ready to get up and go with God and build for God and work for God thank your father for getting up for me I'm innocent but I've been found guilty and Jesus who was found guilty but yet innocent had the final say he went through all of that only to say you don't know what's about to happen <laughs> Emmanuel AME Church you don't even know what's about to happen what God is about to do what God is about to do in your life there's somebody this morning you've been found guilty but you know you're innocent and God is saying don't even trip I'm about to do something amazing in your life I'm about to do something supernatural 
I'm about to do something that you can't even imagine because your father, your attorney, has all power. Not some power, all power. So I don't care what you've been found guilty of this morning because Jesus got up and gave you a clean slate. And this morning, my brother and sister, in the words of Pastor John P. Key, you are not guilty. You have been proven innocent by the blood of Jesus. But the interesting thing is, you can't be found not guilty and proven innocent if you have not been washed in his blood. If you've never confessed and surrendered your will to God's will, that if you don't allow God to take complete control of you and allow God to move in your life, that you still got a public defender, but there's a top-notch attorney just waiting for you to sign a contract, and the contract is signed in the blood. The blood was shed for you. This morning, if you are not saved, if you've never surrendered your will to God, and this morning you say, God, I want to surrender my life to you, then wherever you are, just go ahead and type right now into the chat, saved. I want to be saved. All you got to do is write saved. We'll pray for you. Or you can send us an email. You may not want to comment and you ain't want everybody in your business. And you say, nah, pastor, but you want to send us an email. You can send us an email at Emmanuel, A-M-E-C, 2018 at Gmail. You can go onto our website, www.emmanuelamec.com. And there's a section right there that you can send a message straight to me. And I guarantee you, I'll respond within 24 hours. Wherever you are, my brother and sister, if you're not saved, if you don't have a church home and you would like to be a part of the Emmanuel AME Church, you can comment church home or you can send us an email, emmanuelamec2018 at gmail.com. We promise to pray for you. We promise to celebrate and rejoice with God for you if you're not saved and if you need a church home. We thank and praise God on this Resurrection Sunday for you. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for that man, woman, boy, or girl right now who's preparing to make the best decision they've ever made on this Resurrection Sunday. That they have, may have been found guilty in certain areas and aspects of their life. But this morning, because of your blood, you've washed them clean. And they have a clean slate. Now they've been found innocent. We thank you, God. Now, God, we rejoice in their salvation. We thank you, God. And we rejoice in their membership here at Emmanuel AME Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. We thank and praise God. Amen. We thank God. It's time to give. And if you want to give a tithe, the offering, or sow a seed into the ministry here at Emmanuel AME Church, we have four ways that you can give. And check out this video. How can I give and be a blessing to the Emmanuel Church? I'm glad you asked. Even right now, that you can go on our website, www.emmanuelamec.com, and you can give online through our rim section, and you can give, and we will be a blessing to receive whatever gift that you pour into the body of Christ here at Emmanuel. Second way that you can give is what we call the OG way. The OG way is you can write out a check, you can put it in a post office, don't forget to put a stamp on it, and you can mail it to Emmanuel AME Church. 2018 Riddle Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27713, and that we will be a great, tremendous blessing to receive your gifts here at the church. The third way that you can give is you can right now, you can give through Givelify. That's an online app that you can go to the app, Givelify, and give to Emmanuel AME Church, Durham, North Carolina, and we will thank and praise God. And the fourth way that you can give is through Cash App. Cash App, dollar sign, E-A-M-E-C, 2018. That's Cash App, dollar sign, E-A-M-E-C, 2018. And we will be a blessing, tremendous blessing to receive anything that you want to give and or donate to the Emmanuel AME Church. We are honored and we thank God. Now, for those, this may be your first time worshiping with us virtually. If you're a first time visitor, just do me a favor and just put the number one, just type the number one. That we welcome you for worshiping with us here at Emmanuel AME Church. We thank and praise God for you. We thank and praise God for your gifts, amen. Now, amen, we thank and praise God wherever you may be, my brothers and sisters. Let us prepare our hearts, let us prepare our minds for communion, amen.
almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent our hearty sorrow for these are misdoing. The, grievous, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 2021 years ago, we're believing that before Christ was prepared to sacrifice his body, that he gathered the disciples around at the table and he preached and taught to the disciples and shared with the disciples what we call the Last Supper and told them that he was preparing for this day to be taken away. But he shared with them that I'm going to come back. They may not have understood what was going to happen and what the ramifications actually meant. But Jesus took the bread and he broke the bread and spread the bread around and told him to take the bread. And then he took the cup and he drank from the cup and had each one to drink from the cup and told him that the bread that they were eating was a symbolism of his body that was going to be broken and bruised. That the drink that they were drinking from the cup was a representation of the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. So as Christ had done this, we now come, let us break bread together on our knees. I take this bread and I break the bread. And I eat in remembrance of Christ. And after I've eaten of the bread, I've now take the cup and I drink of the blood. For what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. After I've eaten away from the drinking of the cup, I've renewed my covenant with Almighty God. May you go in peace and may the peace of God be with you. My beloved brothers and sisters, wherever you are right now, you may take of your wafer, take of your cup, take of your bread, your cookie, your chip, whatever you have that represents the blood, the bread of the body of Christ. Break and eat of the bread. After you've eaten of the bread, you may now take of the cup, whatever it is that you have that represents the blood, and you may drink of the cup. For what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. After you've eaten a cup, eaten a wafer and drinking of the cup, you've renewed your holy covenant with Almighty God. May you go in peace and may the peace of God be with you. As we prepare to depart from this place, we got to head on down the street and get ready to engage and bless our homeless brothers and sisters. We pray that you'll follow us on our Instagram and uh, Facebook page, amen, so you can see how God is moving over the next couple of hours as we prepare to be a blessing. Thank you to each and every one of you who have sold and poured and deposited into this community outreach that we're doing on this Resurrection Sunday morning. Amen. Let us prepare to be dismissed and repeat after me wherever you are. Walk with God because God walks with you. Talk to God because God talks to you. Listen to God because God listens to you. Love God because he first loved you. Now unto that God who walks with us, talks to us, listens to us, and loves us. May that God who we may have been found guilty continue to prove our innocence. We thank you, God, for exonerating us. Father, we thank you for washing us cleansed with your blood. Now, God, be with us as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. God, bless each and every one of our homeless brothers and sisters here in the Durham area. God, even bless those all across this nation who are homeless. God, help us to bring a joy help us to bring smile, help us to bring hope and happiness to somebody that we engage with on this morning. God, we're praying that you will use us as instruments and tools in your hand to be a blessing that as we are ministering to them, somebody might receive you, somebody might feel your power, somebody who has been found guilty might know that they are innocent because of the blood that sets them free. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, I'm Pastor Kill. I love you, but Remember, Jesus loves you even more. Amen, amen, and amen. Join us this Wednesday night for Bible study. This is the first Bible study of the month. Amen, amen, and amen.